All right, apple division problem from the CSS problem set. There are n apples with known weights. Your task is to divide the apples into two groups so that the difference between the weights of the groups is minimal. The first input line has an integer n, the number of apples. The next line has n integers, p1 until pn. And these integers represent the, the weights of each apple. So p1 will be the weight of the first apple, p2 will be the weight of the second apple, and so forth. And we need to print one integer, the minimum difference between the weights of the groups. So n is in the range between uh, 1 and 20, uh, inclusive. And pi, so the weight of an apple, can be between uh, 1 and 1 billion, okay? Here we have the explanation of the simple input, okay, which you can read uh, by yourselves. And looking at this problem, we're going to try and approach it um, with some different uh, strategies, okay? So the first approach that we can make here is to, it's a greedy one, and that is to add every time uh, to the group that has the smallest weight value, okay? Uh, so let's take this test case right here, okay? So the array of uh, numbers that we get is this one, so 2, 3, and 5. So apples with weights 2, 3, and 5. So by default, if the, if the weights of the groups are the same, we're going to be adding to the left group, okay? So the first apple, which has a weight of 2, will be added to the left group. Then the second apple will be added to the right group because 2 is, uh, two is greater than 0. So we add uh, to the right group, which has the smallest weight value. And then 5, uh, which is the last apple, will be added to the left group because 2 is smaller than 3. And the difference here is equal to 4, okay? It's equal to 4, okay? So uh, in reality, we can do better than that. And that is by having 2 and 3 at the same uh, left group, okay? And 5 to the right group, okay? okay? So then the difference becomes equal to 0. So the first grid approach essentially fails. Now let's look at the second approach here. So the second approach is to first of all sort the array in a decreasing order. So from the, from the highest weight apple to the lowest weight apple, and then follow the strategy that we had before. So in that case, if we take the initial array that we had and sort it, this is what we will end up with. So five, three, and two. Uh, we're gonna add five to the left group by default, then three to the right group, uh, because five is greater than zero, and two to the right group again, because three is uh, smaller than five. So uh, this will give us the optimal solution, which has a difference of zero, okay? Um, but in reality, this strategy will fail as well. So if we take this test case uh, right here instead uh, and follow the strategy again, we will add 10 to the left group, nine to the right group, uh, then 9 is smaller than 10, so we add 7 to the right group. Now 10 is smaller than 16, so the next number 5 will be added to the left group. So we have 15 and 16. And now 15 is smaller than uh, 16, so we're going to add 3 to the left group. Okay, uh, And this will give us a difference of 2. But in reality, we can do better, and that is by adding 10 and 7 at the same group. Okay, so 17 and then 9, 5, and 3 to the right group, which will also give us 17. And that gives us a difference of 0, okay? So uh, this greedy approach will uh, fail as well. So maybe, maybe we can try using dynamic programming here. Okay, so the question here is, uh, how can the best solution for the n minus 1 first numbers help me find the solution for n numbers? So if I solve the sub, the sub problem, for n minus one, for the n minus one first numbers, can that sub problem really help me help me solve the problem for n numbers? And the the answer is that it won't really help help us because for every new number that we uh, add to our array, the distribution of apples will uh, change completely. Okay, so I will not just add this new apple to one of the two groups and that will give me the optimal solution. In reality, I have to move multiple apples from uh, one group to another, okay? Um, so you can look into this. If you look at the cases that we had before, uh, you will see that solving, um, solving the problem for a subset of apples will not uh, actually give me a way of solving it for all of the apples, okay? 
So now the question remains, can we simply br use brute force here? And the worst case for the worst case for n, as we know, is equal to 20, okay? And the brute force strategy would be to try both options for each number, okay? For each uh, apple, essentially. So we can, so for every apple, we can either put it to the left group or to the right group. So why not trying both solutions here, for, uh, both options for every apple? Um, and that uh, will essentially give us two to the power of n different solutions. That is because every time I have two options, so it will be two times two times two, and we will do this multiplication n times, okay? So two to the power of n. Uh, so two options for the first apple, two options for the second apple, and so forth, okay? Uh, if this helps you see it, uh, see it easier. So two, two to the power of 20, which is the worst case for n, uh, is around one million, okay? And this number is actually small enough uh, to pass under the one second time limit. So in reality, yes, we can just simply use brute force here, okay? So let's look into the solution here. So what I'm doing here is just reading n, and then I go from index zero up until n minus one, and I read uh, into my array. So here I have the array uh, as a global variable, okay? Uh, the difference that I have uh, initially is equal to zero, okay? I have no apples uh, in either of the groups. So the, the, the groups are initially empty. So the difference is equal to zero because both groups have a weight of zero, essentially. Um, and then I call this function, which I name solve here. And this number here is the index uh, of the array that I'm, I'm currently uh, looking at, okay? So initially I look at the first index, okay? Um, and then I just output this answer variable here. So this answer variable, um, I have initialized it to have 20, which is the uh, greatest number of apples that we can have, uh, times uh, 1 billion, okay? So the greatest weight um, that we can have, essentially. Uh, and this will give us the greatest difference um, between the two groups. If I put all of the apples that have the greatest weight on the left group, uh, it will be this number minus, minus uh, zero, which is the weight of the other group, which is empty. And the, the difference essentially will be this number here. So let's look at this solve function, okay? So it takes as a parameter, the index of the apple uh, that, we are look, that we are currently looking at. And if the index uh, is out of bounds, so if x reaches n, okay, which is uh, out of bounds, since we have zero based indexing, uh, n minus one will be the last, the index to the last apple. So n will be uh, the index after that, okay? Which means we have reached uh, the end of our array. In that case, uh, I will update the answer here to have the minimum value between the, ars the answer that I have currently, okay? Uh, and the absolute value of the difference, okay? So we're gonna see why I use the absolute value here. Um, and then after I update my answer, I simply return, okay, from this corner case. In any other case, I will add to my difference, so this variable difference, I will add the weight of the apple and try and solve for the next index, okay? So by adding, I essentially, what this essentially represents is you can think of it like uh, adding the apple to the right group, okay? And if I subtract, it's, a, it's essentially like adding the apple to the left group, okay? So this difference value will uh, essentially point out um, the, how, how much more uh, one, group's, one group has for, from the other. So if, it's, if diff uh, becomes negative, it means that I have uh, a greater weight on the left group. If uh, diff is uh, positive, it means I have a greater uh, weight on the right group. And if diff equals to zero, it means that I have exactly the same weight uh, in both uh, groups. So uh, the first case is to add, it, to add the apple to the right group, okay? And then solve for the next index. Uh, after I return from, from this, uh, from, from this function called here, I uh, subtract to this apple from, I actually subtract from the difference number, um, these, apples, these apples weight uh, two times. 
And why uh, am I doing this two times? The first time I do it is to cancel uh, the addition that I have here. So to remove, to remove it from the right group, okay? So I'm grabbing it essentially back into my hand uh, than having it in one of the two groups. And the second time uh, that I, I remove this, that, that, that I subtract uh, this value from the difference variable here, uh, effectively, effectively represents adding it to the left group. So with this line, I grabbed the apple from the right group and I add it to the left group, okay? And then I solve for the next index. Um, and at the end, I simply add uh, the weight of the apple uh, after I return from this function call to effectively remove it from the uh, left uh, group, okay? So that for uh, when am I returning uh, completely from the from my function call, I will not I will not have affected uh, the diff uh, variable here, which is global, okay? So that's why we need to uh, add this uh, array x value here one more time to effectively remove the apple from the left group as well, okay? So now the apple is back into our, our hand uh, instead of belonging to one of the groups. Um, and uh, by recursively following this function, I will end up checking all of the distributions, all of the possible distributions. And my answer here will cover um, all, 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 the, all, all these distributions that uh, might uh, exist, okay? So um, that's pretty much the solution of the problem if you got stuck uh, into this and try to follow a greedy approach. Uh, and this video showed you why a greedy approach will not work. Please leave a like uh, to the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.